Hello, my name is Gerd Lobel. The study we are presenting relates to the organization of the chromatin fiber in the nucleus, and in particular, how regulatory elements communicate with each other over large genomic distances. For example, enhancer elements can reside up to hundreds of kilobases away from the gene promoters they control. In one widely used mechanism, referred to as the contact model or looping model, a distal enhancer physically contacts the target promoter through interactions between nuclear factors. The intervening DNA sequence is looped out. It has also been known for some time that loop organization of the chromatin fiber can also occur during gene silencing. Recent advances from numerous laboratories using high throughput technologies indicates that chromatin looping is a widespread organizing principle of the chromatin fiber. But it is not well understood how such interactions are established. In other words, which protein factors or cofactors generate these chromatin interactions and how do they do it? Importantly, it is still being debated whether chromatin loops are cause or effect of active transcription. Our work tried to address these questions. In particular, we attempted to generate a chromatin loop at an endogenous gene locus in its native setting without altering its sequence, and then examine the impact on transcription. Wulan Deng, an outstanding graduate student who carried out this work, will explain. For this endeavor, we chose to study the beta globin locus in mirroring erythroid cells. Since the beta globin locus is quite well understood with regard to its three-dimensional organization, I'll briefly describe in some more detail the system we employed. All bit-like globin genes are under the control of a powerful distal enhancer called the locus control region, or LCR. In adult erythroid cells, when the beta globin gene is transcribed, the LCR physically contacts the beta globin promoter, resulting in a chromatin loop that spans over 40 kilobases. In previous work, we find that the hematopoietic transcription factor, GATA1, is essential for this long-range chromatin interaction. Since GATA1 interacts with numerous protein, it was unclear which of them needed GATA1's looping function. A factor called LDB1 was a strong candidate, in part because LDB1 was known to play a role in LCR beta globin looping. In addition, LDB1's Drosophila homolog is required for long-range enhancer promoter communication. LDB1 is a non-DNA binding protein that is recruited to chromatin by DNA binding factors, including GATA1. In wild-type erythroid cells, GATA1 and the LDB1 co-occupied LCR and the beta globin promoter. Concurrently, an LCR beta globin loop is formed and the beta globin transcription is activated. In the absence of GATA1, LDB1 fails to associate with the beta globin promoter but remains associated with the LCR through its interaction with the SL complex. Therefore, LDB1 recruitment to the promoter must represent a critical rate limiting step in inducing the LCR promoter loop and activating transcription. So we asked whether artificial tethering of LDB1 to the beta globin promoter would rescue the looped chromatin conformation and activate transcription. In collaboration with Sangamo Biosciences, we produced artificial zinc finger protein targeting a predetermined DNA sequence as the beta globin promoter and fused them to LDB1. Remarkably, we found that targeting LDB1 to the beta globin promoter in this manner substantially activated beta globin transcription. Importantly, LDB1 recruitment restored the LCR promoter chromatin loop to wild type levels as measured by chromosome confirmation capture. The challenge we then faced was to demonstrate that the activity of targeted LDB1 was indeed due to long range looping and not simply due to recruitment of activator complexes to the promoter. To distinguish between these two mechanisms, we used primary erythroid cells from wild-type mice or mice in which the ILCR was deleted. The looping mechanism predicted that in the absence of the LCR, LDB1 would fail to induce a chromatin loop and be unable to activate transcription. Indeed, beta globin was not activated in the absence of an intact LCR. This demonstrates that LDB1 activity is indeed based on a chromatin looping mechanism. We can draw two major conclusions from our study. At a minimum, we can say that LDB1 is a key effector in long-range chromatin interactions. 
Moreover, our work shows that forced juxtaposition of an enhancer with a promoter leads to gene activation, suggesting that chromatin looping causally underlines gene regulation. In addition, we suspect but have not proven that LGB1 has some unique or rare properties that allow its function in this manner. Other proteins that can form dimers or multipomers do not display any activity in this system. In future work, we are exploring whether forced chromatin looping can be used to manipulate gene expression in this or other context for scientific or even therapeutic purposes. Our approach has a unique feature, which is that it aims to recruit an entire enhancer or locus control region to a promoter of interest. We believe that this is likely to produce much more dramatic effects on gene expression when compared to, for example, tethering a conventional activation domain to a promoter. As an example for a potential application, in the globin field, a long-standing goal has been to reactivate fetal globin genes in adult erythroid cells, as this can be beneficial to patients with sickle cell anemia. Therefore, it is worth exploring whether we can achieve this with our approach and direct the LCR away from the adult globin promoter and recruit it instead towards the fetal globin promoter to turn on transcription. More broadly, we also envision that forced chromatin looping might be used to effectively turn off gene expression.